and welcome to the third and final part of the Sinclair's Law Legal Eagles Apprenticeship Challenge. Today the candidates have come here to the University of South Wales where they'll be taking part in a real life court scenario and whoever gives the most convincing performance well they will be walking away with a career as a solicitor at Sinclair's Law. This groundbreaking and exciting contest has already seen the candidates put through their paces at Sinclair's headquarters in Cardiff. Next, they travelled to London and the heart of the British judicial system, where they faced a panel of legal experts and got an insider lowdown from a barrister and a judge. Now they're back in Wales for the final. So, a reminder of our six remaining candidates. They are Oliver. Lucy, Georgia, Saffron, Olivia, and Christian. It's a very, very difficult task to try and choose among such talented young people a winner. Uh, and there will be two winners. Among the candidates, there's a real sense of achievement at having made it this far. I was thinking back to when I first applied, and it was like, it it was like a dream at the time, and now that I'm here, I've put so much hard work, like I'm, I'm really quite proud of myself. Amazed and shocked, to be honest. I didn't expect to make the final. I'm really excited, I can't wait to do it. Now it's all down to what happens today. Well, this is where the contest will be decided, in the university's very own courtroom. And as you can see, it's all very realistic and convincing, and that's what the candidates will need to be as they present their case. All the candidates have been sent a video outlining the fictional story of Jonathan Fletcher, a young boy who suffers from autism. He finds it difficult to follow lessons at school and feels bullied by his classmates. But miss, he's well weird. After winning a tribunal to get their son a place at a specialist school, Jonathan's parents decide to sue his former school for negligence. They say it failed in its duty of care by allowing Jonathan to be bullied Sinclair's Law is the biggest education law firm in the UK and this is typical of real-life cases handled by their teams of experts. But how will the candidates deal with this case? First, there's a quick training session so everyone knows what to expect. Courts are very busy. They don't like to spend very long on cases. You only need to deal with the points that are an issue, i.e. the things that aren't agreed. In order to prove a case in terms of negligence, there's a number of core things that you as claimants need to establish. Some of the candidates are representing the parents and some are defending the school. So with the coaching over, it's down to business. Oliver and Christian are the first up in court. Lawyer John Ford is sitting in as the judge and assessing the performances is barrister and part-time judge Mary Hughes alongside the rest of the Sinclair's legal team. Oliver represents the parents. The entirety of this case revolves around Jonathan Fletcher being bullied, which came about due to the negligence shown by Kesgrave High School towards their duty of care. Not only were there meetings, but there were numerous letters addressed to the head teacher from around the situation of bullying. He, I think, has got great intellect. Uh, he certainly he, he, he speaks very, very well. He delivers um, the content well. Um, he's researched it well. Despite this, no action was taken and the bullying continued. It is unacceptable that a teacher who has the duty of care to look after their pupils does not stop any type of mistreatment. He used some rather strong language about, yeah. he yeah. talked about somebody being incompetent and ignorance, um, things being unacceptable about the teacher, some, uh, and he used the word ignorance, so, uh, words that were emotive and I don't think would have gone down too well. So, a strong performance from Oliver, but some tough criticisms too. Next up, it's Christian, who's defending Jonathan's school against the negligence action. We do not believe that we did breach our duty of care. We also do not believe that the injury and damage cause was our fault, specifically the bullying that may have occurred. The doctor's report also says in point seven, it could be interpreted as bullying. This is not sufficient enough to suggest that bullying did occur. If you listen to the points he was making, they, they were decent points. It, it, it probably needs a bit of smoothing in terms of rough around the edges, but the, the potential I think is there. 
Christian goes on to make a more contentious point, suggesting Jonathan's suffering is really the fault of his parents. By putting him in this mainstream education after witnessing the suffering he had in primary school is a direct action the parents took to, um, which uh, added towards Jonathan's suffering. Put the problem over to the parents. It was the parents' problem, which I think that was a bit harsh. I know I've done my best and whatever happens, I'm happy. The same, I think I'm glad it's over, all the pressure building up to it and like you said, we've done what we can. Those two look reasonably happy. Let's see how the rest got on. Olivia is summing up the case for the parents. My client has suffered a loss. The psychiatric report states there was a su uh, suffering of anxiety and depression, which she believes has been caused by bullying. This is as a direct result of the school not acting. She had one of the best structures. She dealt with all the points in turn. It was very fluid. Um, she expanded upon the point. The head teacher did receive a letter from the mother of Jonathan, um, but she denies this. I would ask you to take the word of, uh, the of Jonathan's mother over the school. I think she could have taken some of her points and added to them, gave explanations for some of the sort of bold, rather bold statements that she was making. To sum up, it has been proved that it is more likely than not that the school and the head teacher should be found liable for educational negligence. I was timing it, they were given 10 minutes and she only took about five minutes. So that really supports Mary's comments that uh, she could have put a bit more in. Nobody is escaping criticism today. Let's hear from Georgia, who's presenting the case for the school. Jonathan's teacher was then called to give evidence. During her questioning, she accepted that Jonathan was sometimes, to quote, treated poorly by some students, but expanded by saying that in her professional opinion, this was not bullying. Georgia displayed uh, a knowledge and interest of the related areas of law because she mentioned section 175, she was the only mm. person who did that. It is the position of the claimants, Mr and Mrs Fletcher, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that my client committed negligence. The claimants have not met their burden of proof. I therefore request that my client be found not guilty of negligence. She made two quite crass mistakes, I think. She talked about beyond reasonable doubt, which of course is the criminal standard, yeah. and then she requested that the judge find them not guilty, which again, is not the civil, the civil standard. Georgia has consistently delivered on every single stage. It wasn't just simply the content, there was the exchange of the eye contact, <coughs> there was the body gesture, yeah. the language, there was, yeah. a, there was a power in that persuasion. I don't think you can ever like, really know what we were going to walk into there. I think that it's been, it's been a good experience even if nothing comes from it. Let's see how Saffron and Lucy do. Lucy is representing the parents. I submit that it is unfortunate an Ofsted report was not incorporated within the evidence bundle. It would have been helpful to be able to hear from Ofsted their review of the teaching and their current review of the school in terms of their bullying policy. She was dealing with the evidence and bringing out the best points of her evidence, which I think is actually what, largely what you're supposed to do in summing up. She was the only one, I think, who mentioned the the Ofsted report. Mm. The defendant head teacher states that she cannot remember receiving such letter, but does remember a meeting um, similarly in November 2017. And if you're with me on that point, sir, does it not seem highly probable and in the likelihood that the meeting occurred in order to discuss the contents of such letter? What could have been rather weak evidence for her case, the, the letter, whether it had been sent or not, she, I think she um, convinced me that on the balance of probabilities that the letter had been sent. And finally, it's Saffron's turn. The claimant's son was known for his disruptive behaviour and it had been identified his peers acted in retaliation to this, which would suggest that there was no imbalance of power. It seemed to be going so well, but then... Sorry. Don't worry. No. Do you, do you want to move? Yes, please. Sorry. Don't worry. Saffron was clearly incredibly nervous. Um, it was almost anybody's nightmare what happened to her, but um, in fact, her arguments were good. Saffron remains seated to finish her presentation. She's making the case that the fault lies not with the school, but the local education authority. 
In the statement provided to the school, there was no specification to indicate Jonathan needed the extra support. Therefore, the school would not have had the level of experience to provide this level of special care on hand. It's very hard because she did carry on. And that's what, in a, in a real life courtroom situation, if you had a bad day, you'd have to carry on. As lawyers, we have to work very hard. And she's obviously got the, the perseverance. Um, I think Saffron would be able to, to cope with the hours and the stress of the job. It must be such a relief now it's all over. Yeah, yeah. a big relief. I thought I was going to throw up at the time. <laughs> so, uh, but I just pushed on because I thought if I don't get through it, so now the courtroom action is over, but who has delivered the most persuasive arguments? It's up to the experts to decide. But it is soon clear that making a final decision is going to be extremely tough. I think it's, um, it genuinely is for us extremely difficult, uh, isn't it? We may have front runners, uh, but I think um, we will um, give this some thought over the next few days. So, no announcement today, but after a week of agonising debate, Mike can finally let the winning candidates know the result. First, it's Georgia. Georgia, how are you? Good I'm absolutely delighted to tell you that you were successful. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Thank so, you so much. Her presentation was, was excellent, there was a character there, the passion came out, I mean, she really engaged with the, with the court. It's such an overwhelming feeling to know that someone else believes in you as much as maybe your friends and family say they do. Um, and not just to say, oh, you're going to go far, but to actually help you get there. Next to be told is winner number two, and that's Lucy. Welcome to the Sinclair's Law family. Oh my God, that's amazing. So, Thank you. I'm so, I'm just over the moon. Thank you. Overall, she was marvellous, and we are delighted to offer her the position as an apprentice with Sinclair's Law, and I'm extremely confident that she'll go on to be a successful lawyer. We're, 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 we're delighted. I'm just over the moon. I still can't believe it. I just keep replaying the moment uh, Mike Charles told me, and um, I, I'm just so pleased that all the hard work has paid off. And finally, there's good news for Saffron also. I'm sad to say that you didn't get through on the uh, as the winner, um, but uh, we were extremely impressed by you. We wanted to ask you whether um, you would be interested in going down uh, the legal route to become a legal executive. I wasn't expecting tears, which is a nice thing. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> Saffron's been given a job as a paralegal with a view to becoming a legal executive. Saffron has bags of personality. Uh, she really does. She st still had the, the stamina and she, the wherewithal to continue and to get up and fight on and deliver her arguments. So I think she's going to have a great future. As for the rest of the finalists, the team were so impressed that they are all in with a chance of getting a job at Sinclair's when opportunities arise. And that fantastic news concludes this year's Sinclair's Law Legal Eagles Apprenticeship Challenge. See you next time.